Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jared and today I would like to take you through how to create these, uh, these falling like object particle simulations. Um, I use these a lot in stuff like flavor visualizations on, um, like if I go to my Instagram real quick, I use these on flavor visualizations for some of the projects that I work on. So stuff exactly like what you see on the screen here. And I got a question about how to do it on one of my shorts that I created. So I just figured that I would take you through and we're basically going to build this scene that you see right here from scratch. And I'll even do the lighting and camera animation um, for you just to, to kind of show you what all is going on here. But it's just a nice little slow-mo particle animation that's great for doing stuff, um, like I said, like flavor visualization and things like this. So let's go ahead and go File, New, General. And I'm not going to save it just because I'm about to remake it. And so now we have a uh, my default Blender scene. Now... Um, one prerequisite for when we do the scene setup is that um, I already have an HDRI loaded in. If you want to see exactly how I set up my default scene, and my camera for that matter, um, there is going to be a link that uh, in the cards, whichever direction that is, for a video I made setting up this exact default file. Um, just know that I already have an HDRI and a camera set up just generally how I like them. And yeah, all those settings are covered in that video. So let's go ahead and get started creating this scene. So to go ahead and get started, um, I'm just going to set my HDRI strength on like 0.4 or like 4 um, just as a guess so that I can get rid of this window and make this cleaner for you guys. So um, now I'm just going to have rendered camera view on the left and viewport on the right. And that is what we will do. Screencast keys are on down here and I scaled up my UI for you guys so that hopefully this is really clean and visible. So, like I said, this is going to be a particle system. Um, I am going to shift A out of plane. This will be our particle emitter. He's just going to sit up here the whole time and never move. Um, and then we're going to need something to instance. So you saw in the intro that I was using coconuts. Um, I got those from Polygon. So I'm just going to come to the Polygon add-on and import some coconuts. You can see them here. They look outstanding like come on um i'm gonna delete these two because i want to have just like two i want to have more halves than i do whole ones but i want this whole one to stay and then we're gonna need to create our kind of instance collection or our, our collection of things that are going to be particles out to the side over here so i'm just going to select all three of these hit m move to a new collection and i'm just going to call these um uh, coconut instances. Cool. I'll drag this into my scene and then um, this empty I can get rid of. Cool. So now we have our we have our particle emitter and we have our instances, which means that we can come down to the particle settings on our plane and add in a new system. And I'm just going to rename this coconut falling um cool if i hit play you'll see that we have a bunch of balls just falling way too fast um to change that we are going to let's just go ahead and start out um, by switching out our render instance to a collection and what this is going to do is it's going to look at whatever collection we tell it to which in this case is going to be our coconut instances and it is going to take all of these, all three of these pieces beneath it. And those are just going to be the objects that are used as the particles for this plane. So if I hit play, you'll see that we have a bunch of teeny, teeny, teeny tiny coconuts. Um, I can't even like zoom in close enough to be able to see them. And that's because for some reason the scale is always set at 0 0.05. Um, I'm just going to set this back up at 1. Or actually, I'm going to set it on like 0.75. I think that that's going to be a good, probably a good size for these. So now we have a bunch of normal size coconuts falling way too fast. Um, so we're going to come back up and now we'll kind of go top to bottom in the particle system settings and build this thing out. So number I'm going to, 
Um, I'm probably uh, leaving it at a thousand is probably okay for this. Frame start and end totally fine at one hundred or one and two hundred. Lifetime I'm gonna set to three hundred and fifty because that is the total length of my animation in my default scene. Um, whatever length you want yours to be, that should be your lifetime, assuming you never want them to die. Lifetime randomness, all good. Um, source, it doesn't necessarily matter. You can set it to volume for like a slightly um, more random look, just depending on what you use as your um, as your emission uh, source. Okay, so, sorry, that was hard. Um rotation we are going to go ahead and turn on we're going to leave it on velocity hair um we're going to turn our randomize phase up to one turn on dynamic um basically randomize phase is just uh randomizing the default rotation and then dynamic is allowing it to um, be if i think that dynamic is allowing it to be affected by physics uh affected by collisions and effectors so um, yes, I think we're going to use some effectors once we get down here. Um, angular velocity, we are going to set... I've experimented with mine on this scale already, so I'm going to put mine at 3. But I'll show you in just a second. If we, if I go ahead and open up the physics tab and I turn my drag and damp down or up to like 0.7 each, then the speed of these is going to get a whole lot slower and you'll be able to fine-tune what looks good as far as your angular velocity. So angular velocity is basically like the rate at which these are kind of turning on their own. Um, so uh, point 0.3, once I kind of speed this back up by turning the drag and damp down a little bit, um, I think that point 0.3 is going to be, f or I think that 3 is going to be fine. I might actually even turn it up to 4. And then um, drag and damp, uh, like I said, we're just really slowing down this falling rate um, with just some physics forces. So I'm going to turn these down to like 0.35 each. And then if I hit play, that is pretty good. Still a little fast for my taste. Maybe 0.5s on each. And I think that generally speaking... That is pretty good. I'm gonna focus really quick on my viewport side and just see, like, do these look like they're rotating at a decent speed for how fast they're moving? And I think that generally speaking, they are. Um, I think that this is fine. Um, now that we've kind of gone through and played this through a couple times, I'm gonna come up and cut my number of coconuts emitted per frame in half. Oh. I don't know why that would be the case. Yeah, 500. And this looks good. This is a good starting point. Um, we've got some random rotation going on. Um, they're all in different phases of their, their rotation cycle. Um, this is a good starting point. They're all obviously follow, uh, falling basically in rows, which is... Um, less than ideal. So next thing that I'm going to do is come down to force field settings. I'm going to turn on self-effect. I'm going to set the effector amount to 1. And then in type 1 here, I'm going to select a turbulence. Um, you can play around with all of these different force fields. They're all, they all create super interesting... Um, they all create super interesting results. The vortex is one that I use a lot. Wind I also use a lot. Um, uh, fluid flow creates some interesting stuff. But I'm going to leave this on turbulence for now. And um, if we go ahead and just kind of play through as is, you can see that we're getting some slight variation already from the like straight lines that we were getting initially. Um, they're falling at what seems like a slightly more random interval. Um, and so I'm going to take my strength to like 8, my flow to 8, and then I'll put my size on 1. And let's just see what we get out of that. So now we're getting a lot more movement in each individual particle. 
it looks a little bit cyclical. Um, so I think, I don't know if that is a size issue. Let's set our size up to two. Yeah, I think that in general, this looks pretty good, just for good measure. Let me check this out at 0.5. You're just kind of finding, uh, you know, the different settings that work for your scene. Every scene is basically working on a different scale, so a lot of these are going to be very subjective to what you're doing. So I like this look that I'm getting at the moment. All of the stuff at the top of the frame is kind of coming over to the left, and then it just kind of waves back to the right. And so it looks, um, I wouldn't call it windblown, but they're definitely being affected here. And I just in general like the direction that they're traveling. Okay, now that we have kind of got a motion that we like, um, it is time that we can bake this and start to make an actual scene out of it. So baking is really simple. In your particle system, you'll just come up to the cache tab and you will click uh, bake all dynamics and that will just, you know, run your sim and basically lock all of this in so that when it renders through, it appears like you want it to and not in a super random way that keeps trying to recalculate in the middle of the sim. Um, you can see that it is done when you see like your frame number frames in memory. Uh, this is a really simple setup here, so it shouldn't either take long or be very many um, or be very large in file size. And so now we can just kind of make a simple scene out of this. And so um, I'll just kind of show you how fast that can happen. We'll just go shift a add a mesh plane and then um, this is something that we have done many times on the channel. We're just going to make an infinite background. And the way that you do that is you add a plane, tab into edit mode, back to vertices, E, Z to extrude on the Z axis. Um, grab the back two vertices again, control B, scroll up, um, drag out and scroll up to subdivide the bevel back into object mode, and then I'm just going to scale like crazy on this because I don't want the floor in it. I don't want any of my dynamics to get like messed up by this thing. And then I'm going to go scale way out, SX, scale along the X axis a ton just so that like I don't get any lost reflection. That's kind of just good practice. I don't think it would affect this scene, but like if there was a lot of reflected, like if there was a reflective product, for example, in this scene, like a cosmetic or something, uh, you would want to have this be super long so that it captures just white reflections instead of like your HDRI or something. So if I go back to the beginning now, kind of play, um, you can see we just have this super flat, not dynamic in the slightest um, uh, lighting setup going on here. And so I'm actually going to come to my, uh, shader editor and go and just zero out my HDRI. It has served us well until now, but I don't need it anymore. Um, I'm gonna do shift A, add in an area light. We'll go RX 90 to uh, rotate 90 degrees on the X axis, RZ 90. And then we will um, just drag this out here. Scale it on my Z axis. Hopefully this is easy enough for you guys to see. And then I'm gonna set this to like 250 on the power. And so already we're looking pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, I'm gonna uh, shifty, oh, that is not the thing I wanted to duplicate. Shifty my light. Um, and we'll go R Z 180. I guess that doesn't matter because I'm going to come in here add a, an object constraint, track to, and I'm gonna have this look at my camera focus object, and then I'm going to just pull this area light up here in the back. Cool. Delete the second plane that I did on accident. So we're just creating a really simple, simple, simple three-point lighting setup. Um, Shifty Y on this light that has the object constraint, and then I'm gonna bring it down like to the 
the coconuts level. And I'm going to scale this one way down and set this one to like 100 just because I don't want these front faces to be like total shadows. So you can see as I toggle this on and off, like we're just totally dark on the front here, which is cool. It's a dynamic look, but um, I, I might even like turn this down to like 50 so that we maintain some of that and don't just flatten it out like it was before. Okay, cool. That's our lighting setup. That's our scene setup. Um, I'm going to turn on depth of field in this camera, which I already have set up by default, but um, you'll just need a focus object. So mine is just a plane axis in the middle of this thing. And um, camera, camera settings, turn on depth of field, set your focus object here, and I'll set my f-stop to like four, just to kind of make it extreme so that I can see what's going on. I'm gonna go f5.6 and that will be where I leave things. So now, I mean, this is kind of your scene. Like you are more or less ready to render here. If you want to know how I would render it, um, if I go sampling, render, uh, 0.05 on the noise threshold, 512 max samples, denoise always on, motion blur always on. Um, and so, yeah, that is a... Uh, that is how I make these particle systems that I use for like flavor visualization animations. Um, I use this exact setup more or less for all kinds of client stuff all the time. And there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with it. Um, it's just like, you know, if you play with those force fields, if you play with the physics stuff, there's there's a ton of really cool results that you can make. So maybe I'll do some other stuff in the future with this and kind of expand on this idea creatively. But for now, I just wanted to show you exactly how I would make this scene. And um, yeah, just really uh, give you guys some insight on how I do these. If this video helped you out, please leave a like, please leave a comment, um, whether it just be thanks or constructive criticism. I appreciate both. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video.